Okay, he's Mega here, and uh, so I decided to come back tonight and work on this a little more. Um, so that's what it is. That's what I I got it done. So I have to use two Dremels to do it. I use this one, and uh, I don't need this light anymore. And this one here. So and I use this little tip here. This it's kind of like a little diamond cutting tip. Looks pretty good. Um, so there it is. Um, so I had to slot these ones quite a bit, a lot, a whole lot. Um, these ones came out a lot neater, and they're a lot stronger, but I think it should be okay. So uh, let me go bolt it up and then show you what it looks like. And it made a big mess. Okay, there. that's what it looks like when it's bolted in. Fits pretty damn good, if you do say so myself. It looks like it belongs there, you know. Um, so the chain, the chain is is actually pretty close. It's not too bad. So I'm looking at it right now. Probably want it to be around there like that. So we probably have to move it up a little bit. Put the chain on top of the this little tensioner here real quick. So yeah. Um, we have to move it up just a little bit, just a little bit, um, probably, probably have to grind that spacer down a few millimeters, that's what I'm thinking, because right now, right now it's too far, actually let me see if I can put the chain on okay, there. Okay, so I got the chain on there, but yeah, unfortunately it's too far, the the sprocket is too far down. It it doesn't. It it's kind of like binding a little bit. It would work, but it's making all those grinding sounds. The not a happy chain. That's what I'm gonna say. Not a happy chain. So, so yeah, we're gonna have to move that um that sprocket up a little bit. Maybe, man, not a lot. So we're just gonna have to grind it. Grind that spacer. And then, um, yeah, we're just gonna have to grind that spacer, and then, uh, and then just do kind of like a trial and error thing. Just grind a little bit, stick it back on there. Grind a little bit, stick it back on there. But uh, it looks like uh, it looks like it'll be okay. We don't have. Uh, it's not as much as I thought we'd need to grind, just because uh, I made this as close as possible to this stuff here. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we won't have to mess with this too much. But I feel that we gotta move it. We can move it quite a ways, actually. So um, this uh, this uh, the chain tensioner has quite a bit of play on it. So it doesn't have to be super perfect, but it definitely has to go this way because it's almost touching the arm arm back here. All right. So anyway, um, that will be uh, that's where I'm stopping tonight. Um, I will be uh, will be modifying the. Uh, the spacer and the, the the counter sprocket tomorrow to get to a line. All right, here we go. Okay, it is right here. So uh, it's next day, and uh, we gotta go get this uh, sprocket. Finally, finally finish this uh, mounting this motor on, um, and then we get. It. So I mean, the motor is mounted, but we need to go adjust the sprocket. We need to go move it up a little bit now since it's sticking too far out. Alright. So let me get this thing off of here and we'll, I will try to get that uh the sprocket off. So from what I remember this is a uh what's the word uh it's a reverse thread from what I remember. Um because uh, I ran my fingernail through the threads and I was like hmm it's righty it's a righty loosey and loose uh lefty uh Lefty tidy. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Okay. He's a mega here. We're gonna try to take this, um, this locking nut off. So if I'm, like I said, if I remember correctly, going right. Yes, that is correct. Uh, it is a reverse thread. So I have to go clockwise. I'm gonna use my impact gun here. Hopefully that'll make it easier. And I've got a uh, locking pliers here. Oh, I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe it'll. Work. We'll see. Um, I'm just gonna put it on the spacer. I think this is a spacer. It looks like a spacer and then uh, Try not to clamp it too tight. So we don't 
mess it up. Right, there we go. Okay, yep, I was right. It is a reverse thread. There's a locking nut. Just uh, well, yeah, it's a reverse thread rocking, locking nut, so you want to make sure uh, you don't lose that because it's not a, it's a pretty rare item there. So it is, the little sprocket is keyed. Um, you can kind of see, it's a double keyed. So there's like a flat spot here, and a flat spot here. So, all right. So now, now we gotta see if this is really a spacer on here. Oh no, it's not. Uh oh, now we got a problem. There's no way to. Yeah, that is not a spacer. It is the actual shaft, I think. Okay, so uh, that's uh, no bueno. <laughs> so it is is not a spacer. It looked like there was a spacer on there, but it's not. I thought the whole thing was threaded, and but no, there's a there's a shaft here, and then um, so you can't adjust. Uh, how deep? Um, I guess you kind of can. Um, there's a uh, there's a flat spot on the um, on the sprocket. Um, there, there's a, a kind of recessed area, or like a little. There's there's a spacer built into the sprocket, and then there's a flat spot. So if we put the I think it was like this before. Yeah. So, I don't know what we're going to do now. <laughs> There's no way to align that sucker, dude. I mean, we could flip it over and it would make it stick out more. That would be worse. That's what we don't want. We want it to be flat like this. So, uh, what we could do... Oh, I know. If we had a lathe or something, you could machine the, the shaft down a little bit and then re-thread it. But, yeah. So, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Um, the, the next best thing to do would be to modify the stuff that's on the scooter. Um, because this is not... I thought there was a spacer holding it in to a thing, but no, it's just, it's it's the shaft, and then the part that the sprocket goes on, and then the... Uh, and then there's a um, threaded section here. So I, I'm guessing the other one is like that too. So if I did want to put the old sprocket back on, I could. So that's a bummer. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll just put it back. Okay. It's not going to go anywhere. I kind of scratched up the shaft pretty good, but hopefully there's no kind of seal on that or anything. So that's, that's uh, okay. Back to the drawing board. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take the wheel off, the rear wheel off, and I think the only thing we can really do is uh, shim the uh, shim the rear sprocket. Is the only thing we can do. Um, so if I add some washers to the back of this, we can push the sprocket out a little bit, um, and the sprocket kind of just floats around there. We may need to put bigger uh, bigger. Um, longer longer bolts on it um, but we got about we got quite a bit of room to adjust the only the only problem is this uh, adjuster so we if the chain gets close to the spring here it's going to rub on the spring I, I don't think it's a big deal if it does rub on the spring but um, it will definitely ride out here more I don't think I don't think I really want to modify this um, we could I know I don't want to modify the spring because the spring is what a uh, Oh no, you can. We might be able to move the arm in a little bit. It looks like there, there's a little spacer in there. We can cut a little bit of that spacer off too, if we want to. If we needed to push this um, tensioner in more. So, all right. So I'm gonna go take the wheel off. Uh, I think that's a, that's like a 17. Okay, the wheel is an odd size. It's a, it's a, I mean the, the axle is a weird size. The the nut holding it in. It's a 16. Two of them too. It's the other side is spinning. 
Okay, I got it off. Uh, it's a really weird setup. It's just kind of like, it's flat on the bottom, so it just comes out of the bottom. It's not a real whole axle thing. It just, it just kind of just hang in there. And the, the brake, I don't even know how to take this brake off. This rear wheel is kind of a pain in the ass to take apart. Um, we would have to take the cable out. Yeah, what if you need to change a flat tire? I thought this would be easier, but it's not. <laughs> I got the real, rear wheel right. off, so this is a kind of interesting setup here. It's got a drum brake on the rear, and the inner part of the drum brake is right here on the other side. It's actually, it's actually integrated. It's actually integrated into the wheel. It's interesting. Um, so I got it off. There's the axle. It's got a, um, it's got a, um, it's got some spacers. Here and you gotta make sure you put it on right. The longer one goes towards the uh, um, the the sprocket, so I have to remember that. And there's another spacer right there. Boy, I hope I remember how to put all this back together. <laughs> um, it's very confusing. All right, so now that we got the uh, the uh, oh man, the screws are really close to this the hub. Uh, all right, let's take it off first. Uh, that looks like an eight mil. Got the eight mil right here. Yeah, hold it. Do this with one hand. So let's do this in the biggest. Okay, so it has. Has these has a screw or a nut with a, with a little lock washer on it. So we gotta go find some more washers like that. So we can space it out. I'm thinking let's put two washers or something. I think if we have a space if we have a washer like that, um, it'll fit. It'll fit on the hub. It should be okay. That's what we're working with right there. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be safe or not. <laughs> and there's another spacer inside the wheel. How annoying. And then you have to take these four bolts off to get this. This is not a good design at all. It's, it seems more complicated than older uh, Razor scooters. Um, just hopefully you never get a flat in the rear. <laughs> um, the, um, one of the upgrades I'm planning to do is... Uh, get a solid rear tire so I never get a flat in the rear. And the front one is okay. The front one is not too hard to take out. Um, all right, so we got to go find some washers. I'm going to try to put two washers here to help space it out. And, uh, and then, yeah, hopefully they'll do the trick. Uh, it won't be... Yeah, I know it won't center on this, so it won't, it won't be able to center on this thing anymore. It'll be sticking out a little bit, but... What we'll have to do, I guess. It's not ideal, but I think it'll work. It's not really a whole lot of power, you know. Or maybe it might be. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So uh, I found uh, the exact copy of the lo uh, lock washer. I had this little kit here uh, that I got from I think Harbor Freight, and it has a bunch of little washers and and lock nuts and stuff. Um, we could use this, or we can use this, uh, but the problem is this is a little too big. I would have to flatten one side of it so we can get it to fit in there. You can see it doesn't fit properly. But... And they're super thin, so I may have to use like three of them. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, so I think, I think since this has a little more area, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get, let's get nine of them. Hopefully you have nine of these. Oh, that's a little bigger. I'll try to find nine of these. Hopefully, I got nine of them. And then, and then what I'll do is I'll get, I'll, I'll go, I'll put them in the grinder. I'll grind the, um, grind one side flat a little bit, so it fits. And uh, that should do it. This one's way too big. Okay, I got nine of them right there. They're really, really tiny. And then I'm just gonna go grind them here. Probably on this grinder. Oh, probably. I have an itty bitty little grinder. Where did that go? Yeah, I have a really small grinder somewhere. Maybe that would be good for this. Because these are really, really small. So. Okay, right. there they are. 
Um, so what I did is uh, I got this uh, pliers here because <laughs> it gets hot when you when you run it on the grinder, and then uh, I grinded them a little bit to to like that. It didn't take very long at all. All right, so hopefully these guys will fit. And uh, oh man, it made a big mess on the side though. That might, that's probably not a good. But yeah, there we go. It fits perfectly. All right, so we gotta um, so yeah, we just gotta put them in there and put the hopefully hopefully these will be long okay. So still. yeah, some of them have some burrs on it, like this one. Let's see, it's kind of sticking out on the end. I'm just I'm just uh, gonna file them down with this little file here. Okay, um, there they are. They're done. I stacked them up three high, and uh, let's see. I think it's three high. I hope so. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna go bolt the um, okay. There on. it is. You can see that uh, it's sticking out a lot more than it used to, and the hub is—it's not sitting, it's not resting on the hub anymore. <laughs> that's, a, that's the crappy part. But you can kind of just like kind of eyeball it and try to get it as straight as possible. There's a little bit of play, so hopefully I got it right in the center. Or else your sprocket will be like. Okay, there it is. Down, I got know. it back on. Um, it is a little bit wobbly, just a little bit. But it's okay, it's not enough to worry me. Um, so, alright, let's go put this on. Um, we may have to modify this. It may hit this. But, uh, okay, so it looks like it worked. This chain looks straight on the top. But the bottom is not. It's hitting the... It's hitting this freaking spring and the, the bottom of the uh, the tensioner. So we're going to have to do... We're going to do something with this tensioner. What we're going to have to do is try to move this arm inward a little more. Yeah, there's a lot of modification. Okay. So it's a 10 millimeter. Just have to undo it here. I don't really know what's holding it on the other side. Okay, it just kind of suspends on the other side. I'm going to have to get something to keep that from spinning. Okay, so he's my good buddy, the adjustable wrench, to figure out what size it is. It's basically, it's a... Um, it's like a stud kind of but like it, it's it's like the motor it has like a flat spots on it it's like it's keyed so you can actually take it off so i don't even think i need to hold it it'll take them off there we go all right I'm just gonna take this hickey out and figure out how we can move it closer to frame all right so all right so here's this uh that doohickey right here so Basically, you got the little. This is a what the. It's like on a motorcycle. It's a chain roller, and then you got kind of like the bolt that holds it in, and then there's a sleeve with the arm, and then um, and then the spring here. So, so there's quite actually quite a bit of before we hit the spring. There's quite a bit of um, extra material. So what we can do is grind that until we get to the edge of the spring. And I think that should do it. And then uh, we may have to grind the bolt a little bit too, so it'll. And the bolt is just round, so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Basically, I'm gonna grind that part, that part that's sticking out underneath the spring, so it's flush with the spring. And then that way we don't have to modify the spring. Okay, so I got it back in there. So I, when I tightened it, I realized this thing has to free. It has to spin. Or else uh, this thing will not move. So that's why they had the locking nut, and they get this weird kind of setup here. But there we go. So hopefully that did the trick. It looks like it looks like it'll work. Um, it may rub on the spring a little bit. I hope not. All right, I'm gonna go okay, ahead and I am proud to report that it works. Um, it is really, really. So if you look in there, it's really close to the edge, the the inner part of the arm, but it doesn't really. It doesn't touch the spring. It doesn't touch the arm, um, and uh, it kind of—it looks like it's might be deflecting it a little bit, but hopefully that does the trick. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, okay, so for demonstration purposes, I will show you how I I remove and put the chain back on. Um, okay, so I'll show you how I remove and put the chain on. It's uh, it's not too hard on this. So this is the model 36. Uh, E200 scooter and it has the uh, the automatic tensioner basically I'll pull the tensioner all the way down and then I can derail it from there. Oh, 
I can derail it a little bit and then I just move the rear wheel a little bit and it comes off. And then you can take it off, everything off. So there it is, chain's all off. It's freewheeling now. Um, so to put it on, basically I do the same thing. I pull the tensioner down all the way and then I, uh, I make sure that the chain is on top of the tensioner where it's supposed to be. I put the chain around the the motor first because it for some reason so it's a little trickier to get this onto the uh, onto the motor uh, put the, it's it's trickier to put the chain on period because we have an extra tooth on the sprocket. Um, this is 11 tooth where the stock one is a 10 tooth. Um, so and then you just kind of pull it tight. Kind of like it's kind of like just the opposite of how I took it off. And then you just kind of get it on the teeth on the top. And then rotate, rotate the uh, wheel, and it should come on. And then let go, and it should automatically tension the chain. And there it is. It looks like it'll work. Hopefully it's not binding up on anything. It feels like it's binding up. I'll we'll have to actually run it, but so like it it almost the uh, the tensioner almost didn't fit. Um, and I can't really move. What I could what I could do is I could try to bend the arm too. I could bend the arm backwards a little bit. It's kind of hard for you to see, but there's a little arm there, and if I bent it backwards a little bit, but then it'll be crooked too. So I kind of don't want to do that. I think it'll be fine the way it is. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, wire this guy in. Um, so the next the next step is to actually wire it in. 